the face of the Corn Oscars, Matt Rule. Yeah, oh. How are you, Coach? Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, bro. Okay, Big Ten Media Days are happening uh, this week. We knew that. We obviously knew that. We planned this in advance, months and months ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Thank you for making this happen. Stop by the Thunderdome. We are massive fans of yours. As you know, we appreciate the hell out of this. I appreciate you doing this. When I was sitting at my dinner table having dinner and I got the Pat McAfee FaceTime, I said, everyone stop. <laughs> <laughs> I am a cold FaceTimer. That is, that is kind of my MO. Because the way my brain works, it's like we're on this thing right now, and then there's a chance we're going to be on something completely different mm -hmm. 10 minutes later. So we got to get answers right now. So as soon as I learned that the Big Ten Media Day was happening, I was like, who do we know that's going to be here? I literally FaceTimed you. I was like, hey, will you stop by? You said yes, which is why. Hey, we appreciate you, Coach. Yeah, yeah, coach. Let's talk about the Big Ten Media Day. So, so what is this? So you come into town. You'll be at Lucas Oil Stadium. You're talking to every media company and then what is it just same questions how do you feel what does the team look like all that type of stuff is that what this week is all about here in indy yeah it's it's like twofold it's like um you know i'll, I'll have some time where i'm up on the i'm up on the the mic talking to everybody i'll have some time espn fox cbs nbc um but then there's also that they take in the back and they do the stuff the promos like What's your favorite Halloween candy? You know, so oh, so you're spending a football yeah. slow yeah. motion. Yeah. 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 You're doing that entire. You're thing. doing a little bit of that stuff, but uh, but yeah, you get a chance. You know, I got three of my guys here, so you know, we'll go to dinner at St. Elmo's. We'll go out there tomorrow. The five other teams, you know, kind of give them a quick look over, like how you doing, and then <laughs> get back to the media. Okay, so who are the three guys? You got the uh, quarterback? No, no, I got. Uh, I, I always bring seniors. I think like, the guys who've been through the program and battled. So I've got Ty Robinson, our D tackle. We got Isaac Gifford, our free safety, and I got Ben Scott. Who's our, who's our center? So three three great three great guys for us. I like the fact that you got to earn it. Okay, if you're going to represent our program, you got to be at least mature. And obviously, the quarterback position is going to be something somebody's going to ask about. And I can't wait to hear your answer. But I would like to talk about the team as a whole right now. We're not ranked, right? Not ranked. We love that or hate that? We love that. Okay, we, we do love that. We, we enjoy that. that. Because your history in college football, obviously, Carolina Panthers are what they are. But as soon as you got back into college football, we got very excited because your track record says, like, okay, once Matt Rule gets with the program, he's going to build it and build it the right way and going to play great football. Did it Baylor, did it at Temple, Nebraska with all the – I want to say everything available. Nebraska is a first-class operation. Obviously, a lot of championships. You got to feel good with where the development of the team is. How do you feel about the the process of you building a college football team like you have in a? No, I, well, first of all, I love I love building college football teams and being a part of it. And um, I feel great about where we are. Honestly, I think we have a chance to be a pretty good team. And um, I mean, we were a great defense last year. We were top 15 in every category, and we really struggled offensively. And so. I think we're better. I think the guys grew from it. So, man, I, I love where we're at. You know, I, I kind of, as you said, I kind of like being able to sneak up on people and, and be the team that no one's really sure about. So, um, you don't have that very long. Once you've established yourself, everybody's gunning for you. But for right now, we'll kind of we'll hide in the radar. Year two of Matt Rule programs take a step. Year three is where I think the magic really starts coming if we look back on your track record through this entire thing. Head of schedule as compared to other places, or wh where would you judge yourself? Yeah, way ahead of schedule. You know, the, the buy-in from the players when I first got to Nebraska was really cool. And I just said to them, I said, look, my first year at – my first year at Temple was two and ten. My first year at Baylor was one eleven. Like, let's just jump the year two. Let's skip all the. <laughs> yeah. let's, and I'm a little older now, right? Like, you know, I was. I mean, I was a hard charging. Like, I'm a little older now, a little more mature. I was like, hey, listen. Like, I'll, let me. I'll tell you why we're doing things. But if you'll just buy into it, and so we, we you know, we finished five and seven. We had five losses by either, by three points or less, and so okay. it was brutal. But to those guys' credit, man, they just kept coming back. And so, you know, maybe we'll be a year two team. Maybe we'll be a you know, hey, make a couple steps, but. I'd love to make a jump. I'd love to be a real good team. 12-team playoff, obviously, we've chit-chatted about uh, is since the announcement. Kirk Herbstreit looks so good with this. Oh, man. Social. He's got his eyes are popping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's got this tailored suit. He's real thin now. Oh, yeah. He? He's like super Oh, yeah. Fun. Almost jocked. Yeah, he's like jocked almost. He's talking about the 12-team playoff. Obviously, that changes everything for everybody. I, I mean, there's been a couple projections. I think they got Liberty sneaking in there because it's the highest-rated non-Power 5 champion and everything like that. Big Ten is obviously going to be a conference where you can slip up a little bit and still make it with the way the future of football looks. How happy are you to be in the Big Ten? How happy are you to be at Nebraska? And what are your thoughts on the 12-team playoff, and how, do you talk about it with your team? Uh, yeah, I talk about it this time of year. I, mean, I, think, I think when you're sitting out there – and you're running in 110 degree weather. You you better be reminded of why we're doing this. Like we, we want to get to we want to go play for the ultimate game. And it, it would be irresponsible of me to walk every day past five national championship trophies and not talk about winning championships. Like it, it's been proven you can do it there. So 
you know, that doesn't mean once the season starts, man, we'll get very focused on each day. But I think right now we need to talk about, hey, guys, this is what we need to do. We need to win each day, win each game, and put ourselves in position to go play for it. So I'm, I'm grateful to be in the Big Ten because – um, you're going to have more access. You're playing the best teams. I mean, yep. if a year ago you would have said to me, like, hey, Matt, uh, we're going to sign, you're going to have you play USC and Oregon as your two non-conference games, I would have fought somebody. Well, now, <laughs> yeah. well, now they're, we're in the league now, right? And so, and we play, you know, we play nine conference games. Not every conference does that. And so um, you have five road conference games every year. It's a difficult league. And so I think if you can be in the mix in the Big Ten, you have a chance to get into the playoff. And then, once you get into the playoff, it's about who's healthy, who's got the most depth. You know, weather's going to play a factor. Like, there's going to be home playoff games in the first round. So, I mean, I'd love for someone to come to Lincoln and play in, in December. That'd, be, all, that'd Ooh, be a lot of fun. That's a dream, for, I think, for every school, including University of Iowa. Ty has a question for you. Yeah, not quite the same. We went to Lincoln in November last year and won. But uh, that's neither here What's nor there. What's that all about, Coach? <laughs> they won. I, we did. I have, what, they get three first downs that game? I, I mean, uh, how does that even? It, it was a cagey affair. It was a 13-10 <laughs> final. Like Tory he, Taylor win that thing? Uh, he was a big part. Yeah, big part. Uh, quarterback, obviously, that, that was part of it, too. And, and I've said time and time again, I hate that you're the head coach at Nebraska now because I know that, hey, you can't just rest. Listen, I was going to win the the Heroes game the day after Thanksgiving. That that might not be the case anymore. But you kind of mentioned it going under the radar and, and being unranked. Do you think, it, I mean, is a, a large part of that all the hullabaloo that's coming with USC and Oregon and Washington and these other teams coming to the Big Ten? And is part of you thinking like, this Nebraska team is totally different as well because you're starting to finally get your guys in there. It's not the Scott Frost era. It's not any of these teams before. Like, is, is that a big part of it too? It's like, yeah, we have these new teams from the Pac-12 coming into the Big Ten, but this, this Nebraska team is also going to be kind of a, a new iteration of Nebraska that a lot of these Big Ten teams haven't seen. Yeah, I think, I think you know, whether, it, whether it's rankings, whether it's uh, guys on the all-conference team, all-American team, I've always believed, man, like you eat what you kill. Like, you know, like if you want, if you want recognition, then you've got to go do it. So like, like the, the talking season is like, it's for the people, you know, it's for the guys who won last year. Oregon comes into the league and they're, they're a top team in the country because they've earned it on the field. Washington played the national championship game. USC won 11 games two years ago. So people should talk about them. We haven't been to a bowl game in eight years. And so as much as I want to be in the national picture, we also have to, we also have to play a 13th game. Mm -hmm. And so I, I have no problem. Like I, I believe in humble confidence. I learned that from Tom Coughlin. Like I would love to just keep our guys right there, but that doesn't mean that we don't have confidence. And that doesn't mean that we don't expect to be a really good team. And I, I think people that are recruiting against us and, and preparing for us, I think they think we're going to be a good team too. Oh, you think they know they think, Ooh. well, I think it's because of you. I think people just respect what you have Absolutely. been able to build in college and the way you've gone about doing things in college ball. But you just talked about there about the giant. Like you're an NFL guy, though, right? Do you started as an NFL coach? Is that accurate? No. I, well, I mean, I, I I was in college for a long time. I went to the NFL to, with the New York Giants under Coach Coughlin. Then I came, then I had a chance. To, I would have stayed there. I loved working for the Giants. I loved working for Coach Coughlin. But I had a chance to be a head coach. And so, and I actually, like leaving the Giants wasn't a no brainer to go be the head coach at Temple. Um, but uh, I've, I've had to bet on me and. Do you think you run a more pro style uh, operation in college, or how do you think you? And is there is there a big difference? Do, do people make a hullabaloo uh, about <laughs> what a word? Yep. What a word by Yet's Iowa, by the way. <laughs> uh, he was accepted to Harvard, though. Brain was good enough to get into Harvard. Said, "I want to stay at Iowa. Uh, Want to be an angler." Uh, That's right. At the University of Iowa. But do you think there's too much made about college in NFL and the styles in which you go about doing things, or is it two different animals? No, I, I think I think too much is made. I mean, I, I think you know. If you watch the Kansas City Chiefs play, you're watching, you're watching a lot of cool things that you see on college football in terms of the style. You know, the, the differences are, you know, we have, you know, 105 guys on the roster. We have 85 scholarships. So, you know, you can play tempo. You know, you don't have to, you know, 53-man roster, you know, you try to play tempo and the guys are worn down after four or five games. So it, it's just a whole different game in that regard. But I think the plays, the RPOs, the things you see. Coaching, though. All, coaching humans. Oh, well, the – I, I love coaching NFL players. I think NFL, if you can make it to the NFL, as you know, you're the best of the best. Um, I think the differences are in the off the field stuff, right? Like, you know, the day was over, you went home, your coach went home. You know, here I'm like, hey, make sure you go to study hall tonight and, and please make good decisions this weekend. <laughs> yeah. and, and I'm also recruiting 24 7. You know, the player, yeah. the player procurement process is different. Like in the NFL, like, you're a head coach. You're, hope, you're hoping you sign one free agent. You're hoping you draft the right guy. You, we're all seeing the hard knock show with the Giants right now. Like you think you're getting a guy, and all of a sudden you don't get us. We go recruit. We we, we can try to outwork people. Now with NIL, it's a little bit different. Some some teams can outbid people. So 
you can get in college football, you can have multiple number one overall picks. Like Georgia has a bunch of number one picks on their team. So you can have a better roster. So there's less parity. But I think people are people, uh, and just the NFL guys are the, the highest form of, of great athletes. You talk about recruiting and signing free agent, number one quarterback comes to Nebraska and Riola, Riola, Dylan Riola. Mm -hmm. And I saw the spring game and some clips. Guy can spin it, seemingly yeah. has moxie. He's going to be your guy is what it sounds like. And are we excited about having a freshman quarterback? That's a lot of pressure, is it not? Well, you know, uh, what I'll say is uh, Dylan's done everything right since he's been there. Um, and this isn't just coach speak. You know, I think – I think again, if you truly believe that, like you eat what you kill, like Dylan, you know he he he's competing with a guy last year that went five and three as a starting quarterback. That's runs four five. That you know got thrust into action last year. Now he's had another year. So my job is to get as many good guys as possible. You know we signed Danny Kalen, who's another elite eleven quarterback. So I, I want those guys to compete. I mean I want to find out honestly at every position. It, it, it sounds like I want to find out who when they don't feel good in the middle of camp still shows up. I want to find out who, when they get sent down to get the three reps that day, who pouts and who goes out and competes. And so I know our three guys are going to do that. But what I'll say about Dylan is since he's been there, he's done everything right. Because, you know, you get a highly recruited kid, and he comes from a great family. His dad played 14 years in the league, right, and was an O-lineman. So the concept of being selfless, of understanding the game, like Dylan has, it's, it's coursing through his veins. So f he's not just a quarterback. He's a football player who plays quarterback. And I think the guys respect them. So I think we're going to have great competition. And um, shoot, you know, if you want to play 16 games, if you want to go play for those trophies, probably going to play two at some point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Think of how many times NFL teams have had oh, a yeah. backup come in and keep them alive for three or four games. So Last year there was actually, I think, 90 yeah. backup quarterbacks or something like that that, that played around the NFL or well, something like that. You saw, and you saw the hard knocks. You see them talking about the money they're going to pay a backup. Like, you know, they're arguing about whether they should play Saquon Barkley, 10 or 11 million, but backup quarterbacks who might not play are making seven, eight, nine, ten. So. <laughs> The position is so important. Uh, let's get as many of them as we can. Yeah, and it's a long season, as our coaches up here on the <laughs> stage will yep. tell you, because they've already played a season with the 12 playoff games. Uh, Coach Dutch Danger actually has a question yeah, for you. Yeah, actually, I've played a few, and let me just say, you know, not to the chagrin of you, but, yeah, boy, I beat the brakes off Nebraska in the college football playoff. Uh, He's I'm a Utah sure. Utes, obviously. Yeah, 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 Coach Dutch Danger's been at Utah for quite some time. Now we're going into year five now. We've got four That's him right there, Coach. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's what everybody's trying to do. There we are. That's what we're all <laughs> doing. <laughs> Uh, right there. Yeah, yeah gets you one of those, Coach. But uh, no, <laughs> one of the biggest things in this game is recruiting. And, like, I don't think that any of us really knew going into it how much, obviously the video game, of course, what that is. But it just in general, how much you have to do. One of the things is, like, you know, you're looking at social medias. Then you're contacting the family. Sometimes you got to send the house. That, and that takes 50 hours. That's, that's Sometimes you get locked out. Sometimes yeah. you get locked out. Yeah, you don't make it into those top three schools that the kids kind of get down to. Uh, for you, though, when it does come to recruiting, how much are you going into social media, going in, calling families, and not just, you know, the kids, but, like, reaching out to the mom, reaching out to the dad, seeing what they have to say about their son? And how hard is it to kind of pick through the bullshit? Because obviously, when you're reaching out to families, they're going to put over their son more than anything. But how often does, you know, the other things like the social medias not reflect what, you know, you're hearing from their coaches or things of that nature? How hard is that? And then how much are you kind of divvying up between Portal and also high school? Because like, that's something I'm trying to kind of Coach Dutch Danger is trying to manage yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, Coach Danger is trying to kind of figure out if, if you need to spend a couple more hours in the Portal versus, I you know, these that. high school boys. Oh, my God. I need to start playing the game more. This guy's won back-to-back -back national champions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm in, year, I'm in year 2027, so I'm a little ahead of the eight ball. Well, first of all, let me just say this. Recruiting. It's an honor. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea what I was getting into. No, you didn't know who you were in a present. Uh -huh, uh, that's right. I, I was one, my son's been downstairs for literally for like three days, and like I haven't heard from him. And he's in. He's recruiting. Right. Yeah, he's, he's, he's recruiting. He's recruiting. building programs just like his poppy. I'm, I'm glad. You, the, the, the thing about it, I, don't, I haven't played the game, but like the thing of it is, you can sit in someone's house for 50 hours. And do all this work and then not get them. Yeah. At the very last minute. So, like, it's it's a high stakes, high stakes. All the things you're talking about is what we do, though. And, um, like, even the era of, like, tech, like, there was a while where it was texting. Mm -hmm. But, like, texting is not real anymore. Kids are getting 5,000 texts if they're a good recruit. So, it's it's being on the phone. It's FaceTimes. It's calls. I mean, even in season, uh, over an hour of my day is spent on the phone with families and with kids. And, you know, because that's, that's the lifeblood of the program. Yeah. So... It's all real. It's all. I think. I think all of us, whether you're in the NFL, getting free agents or drafting people, you saw that in the Hard Knocks show. Well, it's us. You're trying to figure out who the person is going to be in the program. Like, 
you know, do they love football? Are they going to be able to handle adversity? Are they going to be a part of the team? So you're trying to balance like elite talent with elite character and, and elite football character. So it's, it's a, it's a, just think about, I don't know what it's like for you, like hiring people and, and the people you guys work with. I like, don't, I don't hire people. I hate it. So these, you guys, they just, been around a long time. Yeah. We just yeah. came and we yeah. never left. Yeah. yeah I love that. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I, we have hired and it is certainly a thing. Right. I hate it. I'm very worried that what we have, I would like to bottle what we have and just hang on to it for as long as we possibly can, as opposed to mass expansion and let it just bring on more players. Hey. I don't know how you sort through, like, how do we keep what we have or how do we build what we have without the worry of, like, somebody coming in and ruining it all, which can happen right. in, in human instinct. is It's possible. So so often for like, for, like, people who follow recruiting, it's about who you don't get. Like, oh, my gosh, we didn't get. I'm always so, like, I'm concerned about who we do get. Like when I find someone, whether it's someone I hire or whether it's a player that comes from like the right family, like that's got the right hunger, that's got the right edge and toughness. Like I, I need guys who like, I don't need every, everyone on my team doesn't have to be a superstar that's been, I mean, I need guys who are like grimy and gritty and tough and yeah. are willing to fight for Talking about want. Team USA right now with the Olympics, the basketball team. Yeah. Mm. They're trying to figure out who are the people that that's are right. like the glue. You need the glue. You exactly need to find right. the glue. How do you recruit the glue? You just ask. You know, you ever see, ever see, the, ever see the Kobe Bryant deal when they talk about with the, with, oh, they're on Team USA and he, who, he ran through uh, Paul Gasol's, he said, hey, I'm oh, going to yeah. run yeah. his face. Yeah. Like, I need guys on my team to quote Marshawn Lynch without the cuss words who are going to run through somebody's face. Yes. Like I need, I need those guys, and that doesn't always show up in recruiting. So, to me, recruiting is about finding the guys who are going to be right for you, and who are going to fit for you. And you know what? I, I, some teams are first or second in the recruiting rankings every year. Like to me, it's just about hey, who is going to come there? Who's going to thrive in your culture? Exactly, my program. Who's going to do what Coach you want? Coach Dutch Dangerous. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that's yeah. what's hard about the portal, right? Because the portal, like, there's no six month recruiting period, man. It's like they hit the portal. You got about a week to decide are they right for you or not, and oh, yeah. so. Um, you know, it took me a long time to ask Julie to marry me, and she's the best thing that ever happened to me. So yeah. asking a guy to come play for me after a week of knowing him is really hard. So. Yeah. Are you a big transfer portal guy? I don't think you are, right? Not much, no. You know, we, we, um, you we, will if you need a piece. I yeah, see. yeah. I just feel like if you come to play for me and you had a bunch of options and you decided to come play for University of Nebraska and you're in the program, then you shouldn't have to all of a sudden be like your junior year. Some guy comes in, he plays ahead of you just because he got more NIL money. You know, like, to me, if there's, if there's a hole there, yeah, well, we go get somebody. So we'll always look to improve our team. But I just don't feel the need to – sometimes as coaches, like, they'll look at their team and say, well, I know what's wrong with him. They're always trying to improve it. Well, how about you just coach your own guys? And how about you just develop your own guys? And I think when you look at the teams that are winning at the highest levels, they have some portal guys, but they recruit at a really high level. How do you feel about you being a perfect fit for Nebraska? Is that how you feel? I know you haven't been there long, but I, I feel like – and I've never – have I been to Nebraska? I don't know. Mm. I don't know if I've ever oh, stepped foot in the state of Nebraska. You're crazy. Oh, College World Series? Yeah, I've never been. We, I've been. I've heard. Get invited. Have you guys been to College World Series? Yes. No, we're going no. next year. Okay. Rocco's the whole thing. Yes. I get it. You guys are buying jelly Incredible. shots. I get it. I've heard it's awesome. People have sang Nebraska's praises for sports fans in the women's volleyball thing. Like, amazing. That was nuts. Amazing. Like, mm -hmm. It sounds awesome. But the way you talk and the way you describe what type of team you have, I assume that people in Nebraska respect it because they're high football IQ fan base yeah. out there in Nebraska. Yeah, no doubt. They're, they're football people. Like I, I was in Texas at a coach's clinic, and I saw a guy who's – uh, Nebraska alum, and he said, hey, can you, can I put you on the phone with someone? I put, he put me on the phone with his 84-year-old mother in Lexington, Nebraska, and I'm talking to her on, like, the house phone, and she's like, I watch every press conference, coach, keep doing what you're doing. Like, that's real. Yes. That doesn't happen everywhere. It's, it's just, you know, we don't have a pro team. This, this is the pro team. They, you know, they're out there from the beginning of warm-ups to the end of the game, and, um, you know, at, at the end of the day, you said something very nice earlier, like, well, people are thinking Nebraska's be good because of me. I don't know that it's that. I think they see what it has been. And if you can get it on track, we have the facilities, we have the fan base in this new Big Ten. We're in the middle of the country. So, you know, we're not going to have to travel East Coast to West Coast. We'll, we'll have manageable travel. We're good at a lot of sports. We won five Big Ten championships this year. We got nine kids in the or seven or nine kids in the Olympics. Like, we have athletic excellence. If football gets itself together, we should be a powerhouse because we've been a powerhouse. Yeah. And so I looked at it like, man, like I went to Temple, I loved it. I love Temple. But I was trying to do something there that had never been done. I went to I went to Baylor and Coach Bryles had had a lot of success and all that, but I was still trying to get it to a place that hadn't been I walk by five natties every day. Yeah, they, so, they're telling you. That's mm -hmm. right. Hey, get, hey you need up. to get to yeah. Yeah. Hey, welcome to the state. Let's yep. uh <laughs> yeah.
Let's say, uh, yeah, you've done good. Yeah, we're proud of you. Very proud of you. Uh, D Butt's got a question. Yeah, the legacy is there. The tradition is there. Black shirts, obviously, know about that. What went into hiring your new uh, secondary coach, Butler? Been around the game, obviously, for a long time. Coming from the pro game as well, did great things uh, in Buffalo with the Bills. Who's this? Uh, John Butler, new secondary coach. I mean, I can just. I already know he's a great defensive mind with the last name. But what went into uh, <laughs> Coach Butler and uh, hire him? Yeah, you know, I, I've known John a long time. Mm-hmm. Kind of got in the business at the same time. And, you know, uh, lost our secondary coach this time of year. That, those things usually don't happen. Yep. So, um, but I had a chance to coach against him, even in the NFL. Like, I went up, played against the Buffalo Bills, Micah Hyde, Jordan Boyer. You're like, it, you talk about recruiting. When you come to Nebraska and you're like, well, I want to go to the league. And, well, all the coaches either coached or played in the league. And our DB coach just coached the, the, the top five passing defense in the league five yeah. years in a row, like, okay, they're going to help me get to where I want to get because just as much as guys want NIL, I want them to want the NFL too. Mm-hmm. And so um, putting guys there like John that are great teachers that have been at that level, has been the defensive coordinator at Penn State. Um, I know this. I'm a much better head coach when I have great players and great coaches. And yeah. so John, you know, John was kind of sitting out. We've known each other a long time. I had an opening. Man, I'm blessed that he took it. Yeah, awesome. bring him to Nebraska. Anytime you get more experience in there, it's good for recruiting, too. This mm-hmm. guy's been there. You know, you can sell the entire NFL thing. A guy who wrote a full college football preview has a question for you from Hammer Don Don Tone Diggs. Yeah, I did, Coach. And one of the big things was uh, studying your schedule when I was doing that preview. And I, the one thing I noticed, I got you. Now, you don't have to comment on this. I have you favored in your first seven games of the season. Now, but those first four games, those first four games are at home. You talked about how good the defense was last year and how the offense you know, needs to make some improvements. How big is it, whether it's Riola or another quarterback, how big is those first four games being at home to kind of get their feet wet and that offense to kind of get clicking before you get into that back half of the schedule? And shout out to the AD. Yeah. yeah. Four straight. Smart yeah, that's, man. that's a big play. <laughs> well, it's the first time, I think, since you know, Keith's back there since 2019. Now, we haven't been 1-0 I mean, at Nebraska since 2019. Man. And I think we started with a road or a conference opponent, you know, in most years. So it's a little different schedule this year with being at home and all that. Um, I, I'll be honest with you. I love it. Like, it, the, the pro game, being on the road and being home, not quite as much. Like, I, I didn't do a great job last year. We went to Minnesota. It was, a, it was the first game of the year. It's a gold out. They're all wearing gold. It's a sellout. Like, the crowd noise. I mean, it, it was unreal. And they rode that boat right in your face. That's uh-huh. exactly right. right in your face. He just got that thing You had wrong. no idea. Yeah. You're coming out of the NFL. You're down there in Baylor. You had no crew, uh, clue that there was actual boats <laughs> coming right There's into no your face. And they were all rowing. That's right. Early, especially. And come crunch time, they beat us, you know. And then we went out to Colorado this next week. And, uh, you know, Coach Sanders coming off, obviously, beating TCU. And, I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's a sellout. So, you, we started last season on the road. My, you know, our first two games is together, like trying to figure out how to travel. How, hey, here's what I expect from you. And we're on the road versus sellout crowds. And when you're at Nebraska, you have to, you have to expect this. But um, to start at home, then I don't have to worry about the crowd noise, be able to get down inside the five and have everybody calm down. I mean, again, we lost by three points. You know, we threw an interception right before the half. Uh, in their end zone. Maybe if we're at home, it's a little quieter. We have a little bit better connection. Oh, yeah, of course. All these little things matter. So I, I, I'm fired up about being at home to start. You got Colorado uh, week two, I think. Game two. Mm-hmm. They're coming off of uh, North Dakota State. And literally the last time you were on the show, <laughs> you said the first thing you said uh, to the AD is, I don't want any names with Dakota in it for our uh, auto conference schedule or anything. Colorado, though, obviously wagon. Everybody's talking about this is the year. Shador, obviously, he's top five pick in everybody's eyes. Yep. Heisman and Travis Hunter, obviously, phenomenal player. They got Warren Sapp coaching over there now. They got that. How how much are you looking ahead to scout all the teams on your schedule versus first? Like, how do you handle and manage all that? And what do you expect out of that Colorado game? Yeah, we, we, we spend, literally from the offseason, we spend a week on each team so that you know, like we play Purdue, again, from last year. We play Illinois. We go back. We go through everything we did. Look at them. We study them. Obviously, teams like Iowa that we you know we're going to play every year, that we, we study them, especially, you know, it's year two for us in the league. Um, and then you go back to the beginning of the year. And some staffs are new. Like UTEP's a whole new staff, right? So we're watching their defense from Austin P. watching the offensive coordinator come from La Tech. You know, Colorado has two, two new coordinators, so that's a little bit of a challenge. So, you know, they're playing against North Dakota State the first game. We'll have some time to see that game. But um, – yeah, I mean, we, we prepare for all of them. You know, I, I think the thing with Colorado is, uh, again, Shador is such a great player. Travis Hunter, there's no real game planning that. You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you game plan against a shutdown corner? I don't know. You know, you, 
try to win and, and, and do the best you can and go play and compete. <laughs> yeah. And again, it goes back to what I said, man, like, you know, eat what you kill. Like if you want to win, go win. And so um, I'm so excited for that game just for the game of football. You know, uh, it, I'm a Northeast guy. I grew up, you know, Pennsylvania, New York City. Like, like I want college football to be in all 50 states. And I don't want it just to be only in the SEC and only here in the Midwest. I, I love that we got like a little old old school, big eight, big 12, Colorado, playing Nebraska. I love the fact that they're, you know, Washington went to the national team. I think it's just good for football. And so this game, national TV, NBC, I mean, I know everyone's going to tune in to see Shador and Travis and, and, and Coach Sanders, and you know, we'll show up too and see what we can do. I think college football would be loved in every town if they understood and got to experience what Nebraska sounds like every single game, what a lot of the teams down the south that we get to go to. Iowa is obviously absurd. Ohio State in the north represent Like, there's Michigan. You get it. There's some. But then there's some schools that it's just not, you know, it's just not the experience that people have in other places. College football is beautiful. College football is awesome. It's been an honor to learn about it the last couple of years and get dropped, baptized, literally in the middle of it with game day and everything. The future, though, everybody's worried as shit. Everybody's scared to death about the future, especially old school college football people. They're like, well, we can't ruin this. I want my Saturdays to look like Saturday. And then Sundays can look like Sunday. And that is it. You're at this stage, old school college football guy now. Been around. A lot of these older college football coaches kind of, you know, I don't want to say negative about the future, but seemingly anonymous sources are coming out from one tenured college mind that doesn't love the direction in which college football is headed. What is your view on it all? Do you get asked by people what you think should happen going forward and like the guardrails of shit that should happen? Like, what? how do you manage it all and what are your thoughts on the future? Well, I mean, 12 game playoff is awesome. It's yeah, great. incredible. The more we think about, it, the more excited I get about 12 game yeah. playoff. I don't have to play it, coach it, recruit it, <laughs> none of that. But yeah. just as a fan, I'm pumped yeah. about it. But the future of college football, how do you feel about it? And do you get asked about it? Well, I think college football um, is always going to be strong. I think it's, uh, if we're being honest, I think it's probably the second most popular game behind the, the NFL. Yeah. So I think it'll always be strong. I think the thing I worry about is is the, you know, the group of five and the FCA. Like, I coached in the MAC. It was awesome. Like, I'm telling you what, like, going to Ohio U around Halloween and trying to play at Ohio University is an amazing experience. And so I don't want to lose those things, you know. And um, sometimes we can be a little cynical about that. But I think there's a lot of guys playing football at Williams College or at Harvard or wherever that love it. So I just want to protect the overall game. But I think we're making some really good moves right now to save kind of, you know, what's happening. I think uh, the revenue sharing, you know, at the end of the day, like, if you have – if you have twenty million dollars for your players, coach, you get, danger, of course, and yeah. you get five million for your players, he's probably going to win most of the time, <laughs> no matter what. And so, I mean, like, so I think you know, having some revenue sharing now, kind of bringing, you know, I think, I think you know, Tony Petiti's are, you know, and I don't, I don't say things I don't mean. I, I've been, I've been around Commissioner Petiti now for a year, and I'm just blown away by how forward thinking he is. And I think that's what we need, right? Like, the NFL is the NFL because there is power in the commissioner's office. Oh, yeah. Like, if you try to cheat. You know, the commissioner's office is going to step in and you're going to get hammered. And in college football, you know, for 100 years, it's been marked by cheating. But make no mistake, the problems we have now are the same problems that were in college football 60 years ago. They just look different. It's still, the, it's still one of the greatest games. I think it's the greatest game. And, um, you know, I have lots of opinions that no one really asked me that is going to actually implement. You know what I think? <laughs> what, what's, the one, what's the one thing? Well, I think just pure transparency, man. It's like, hey, if I'm, if I'm giving you, you $10,000 or $100,000, like, just like in the NFL salary cap, I want to make sure we all know what it is because, you know, at the end of the day, you have a right to know. And what I don't like, the only thing I don't like is I love guys being able to transfer. I love guys being able to monetize their value. I hate seeing kids go to three or four schools because people are just paying them to leave for a worse. They're paying them to come be a backup. And what you're seeing now is what you saw this year. The underbelly is guys were brought in out of the transfer portal for the spring. And at the end of the spring, the coach is like, ah, he's not good enough. And they're, they're getting rid of them. See, everybody thinks the mm. portal is the kid's unhappy. A lot of times it's the coaches saying, hey, why don't you come here? Or, hey, I'll pay for you to come here. And um, at the end of the day, when they're all said and done, I want guys to make some money, but I also want them to have a degree. And I want them to have played. Like, it's okay to go play at a smaller school. It's okay to play at FCS or Division Two or Group of Five and, 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 and play and have a good experience. So um, I just think there's some things in terms of transparency, knowing how much guys are getting paid. Uh, rules. Should be reported. Should yeah. be reported. Just like in the NFL. Mm -hmm. it, and it sucks as an NFL player that everybody on earth can Google exactly how much money you have. It's not good for players, their families, friends, everything like that. But for other teams, at least you know what the barometer is, what an expectation is. And also, if it's made public, 
have to pay that person too, because so, there's a lot of players that are signing up for shit and then not getting it. Not right? getting it. Yeah, that is a massive. Not problem. at Nebraska. <laughs> not, yeah. Never in Nebraska. Not in Nebraska. <laughs> never though. as a corn husker. Um, how do you feel about the state of football as a whole? Feels like we got more talent than ever. Do you agree? Yeah, uh, you talking about college football or pro football? Just football as a whole. I was watching these flag championships. Oh, yeah, right? unreal. And I saw a 15 year old girl roll right, cross body throwback, mm -hmm. and then her wide receiver one hand snag foot in and it's like what and then you're seeing these younger guys yep. get in the nfl make impacts immediate feels like football is in a yeah. very very strong part right yeah now. i'd say the you know years ago the influx of seven on seven like texas has like high school seven on seven and all, all kids are throwing and catching the ball all year long and that's why the passing game looks the way it looks right now and you know football is becoming an international game you know we have international players now people are playing it all over the you know all over the world and so I think from that standpoint, football's in a really, like, we're doing this Saturday, we're doing our first ever girls uh, flag seven on seven camp. Like, because we know that it's gonna be an Olympic sport and we think it's gonna be actually, be a, I actually think it's gonna be a college sport at yep. some point. Mm -hmm. And so we wanna, get on, we wanna get ahead of that. I got two daughters at home. My daughter literally thinks that she's gonna replace Jordan Love someday. I mean, she's a Packers <laughs> fan. Love it. She's nine years old and she throws the ball every day. And so, hell um, yeah. It's just, it's all good for the, I think football's in a great spot. Uh, I got a daughter 14 months. I didn't even think about her potentially being a quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts, but Here it's like they, at least the flag football development and scholarship opportunities. Yeah. Playing in the Olympics someday. Just think about that. Like, Huge. What if your daughter someday represents the United States playing football? football. That's that's amazing. I mean, you see so many meathead dads cry. That <laughs> oh, opening yeah. ceremony. <laughs> oh, my oh God. My God. <laughs> Just old offensive linemen, two Busted ass knees, <laughs> hips in there, and their daughters just out there representing the United States of America. Just tear just running right down the face in this entire thing. It's a beautiful thing. I love that. Sports are awesome. Yeah. Sports are the greatest thing on earth. We need more of them. We need more guys like you too, coach. You're awesome. Every time you come on here, you're talking about transparency. You're just like wide open with everything. I feel like we can throw anything at you and you would give us like an honest answer as opposed to like a car salesman bullshit. But you have to be a car salesman bullshit guy <laughs> in the recruiting world like Coach Touch Danger. Sometimes, yeah. He lies to these kids all the time. I mean, look, to Coach's point, we kind of have a similar philosophy. You know, you want to come here, of course, I'm going to recruit you, but you got to compete. You got to earn your time. Yeah, so let's talk about you talk about the transfer portal and you want guys to play and everything like that. I want guys to still have to face adversity. There's no doubt. Like, that I think is a big thing that's potentially going to go missing in the college football world because the ability to just transfer. And if you're pretty good, you're going to get money to go somewhere else, but you're also never going to have to experience like, hard times brother yeah. you know like there's gonna be hard times where you're not the best you're gonna have to work you're gonna have to wake up earlier you're gonna have to have a coach that's gonna tell you you suck like right now like that's gonna have to and it's better for their lives we're not gonna lose that right that's gonna still happen well i mean i think it's gonna it, that's why i think in my job and in your job mm -hmm. we have to find guys who are built like that i mean i to, to go talk about iowa like i see uh i remember listening to george kittle talking about the time it took for him to get on the field at iowa yeah and just being like that's those are the stories that matter to me like you know, we're talking about you know Hassan Reddick, obviously you know making a lot of news in the NFL multiple years. He was a walk on for me, like you know what I mean he was a walk on corner to safety to back. He didn't get on scholarship till his senior year. I remember he sat in his office with his mother. He said, "Coach, I can't pay for another year," and we got com compliance to be able to put him on mid year. Like that's why I'm glad every cent he makes now because he paid to go to college. He's holding right now. Yeah, well, He's holding out right well, now. Well, go get every cent. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel so bad about him walking on and playing for free for us, but you know, so I, I just think. At the end of the day, like, you know, the, the, the gritty people in life are the ones who get things done. You know, you know, Barry Sanders sat behind Thurman Thomas. Like, you know, like there's great stuff. Think about Tom Brady. Like, he's the greatest quarterback in the history of the game, in my opinion. And think about what he, I do this with quarterbacks when I recruit them. Like, most quarterbacks, you think about it, they, they kind of have like a journey. Like Aaron Rodgers, you know, junior college to Cal. Like, Drew Brees played at Purdue when Purdue wasn't great. Like, you have all these guys, Joe Burrow having to transfer and sit out. You know, Jalen Hurts having to transfer. Like, like there, there is some adversity, and the ability to overcome adversity keeps showing up to me is is what makes great men, great players. Get knocked down seven times, you stand up eight. That's right. Boom. There you go. Hell yeah.